Okay everyone, this is the pattern and I want to show you how I marked it up. So in this um, video, I'm, right now I'm going to be doing the cutting and then I'm going to be doing the sewing of the block. So I want you to see that I labeled exactly what color each block is from my fat quarter bundle I picked. Actually two of the navies. I'm going to use the cream fabric that I have and I'm using this beige that's on the table right now. That's the first thing I'm going to cut. But I'm going to move this out of the way because there's no way for you to see my hands and this paper at the same time. So if you have questions on this, you can ask me later. Okay, I'm making this the 12 inch size. I'm cutting the A blocks first. I'm doing them in order that they are on the paper. You can cut it by all one fabric. You can choose which way you want to do it. The first thing I want to show you is that the salvage. See here, this is the salvage on the fat quarter and I want you to see how it ripples. I've ironed this within an inch of its life. I've steamed it and it still ripples. This is what I talk about all the time about how the fabric's sewn and how tight the salvage is. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim off the salvage. All right, here I go. I'm just putting it on a line. I'm creating a straight line on the, of the salvage. Actually, what, I'm, what I want to do first, see, this is a good thing that we're doing this live right now, um, is to make sure I'm straight. And now I'm going to put this on a line and I'm going to trim off the salvage. You can go closer if you want. Let's go closer. Save conserve fabric because we don't know how often we're going to want to use it. And I'm just taking the salvage off. Now what you're going to notice is look how flat it lies now. Now I know I can get a clean cut. Okay, so I'm making sure I'm over here on the 12 inch block because that's what I decided I was making for this first block. Now I'm, gonna I'm right handed so I'm turning this fabric around so that the straight line that I cut I've now put it on a line on my mat. Doesn't matter which one you use you just want to make sure it's straight. It's, you're going to use the ruler to cut but it's so much easier to start with it a straight line. Okay so now it tells me that for block A I need 12 2 inch squares. I could cut the long way, which probably would be smarter, but I did not set this up that way, so I'm going to cut the short way. I'm going to put the 2 inch line on the edge of the fabric. And I'm going to start, take my rotary cutter, always closed. I'm going to open it because I'm going to use it. Start off the fabric, end off the fabric. Oh, and I didn't go all the way through. This is so funny, because I almost always do. All right, I'm going to have to do what I said. Maybe I went over a pin trimming some of these quilts. So there we go. We have one two inch strip and I'm going to cut a second one because I need 12. I know I won't get 12 out of that. So I'm going to cut a second two inch strip. Start off, end off. Oh, that time I did it. Beautiful. So I now can remove this fabric because I have enough that's right now all I need of the beige for this moment. But I need these strips, I need to turn them into two inch squares. So now I'm stacking them right on top of each other. This time again I'm going to use a line on my mat to make sure the fabric stays straight and I can trim off a little bit so I don't worry about whether I've caught the top and the bottom. I want to make sure that after I've trimmed this Okay, I have two little pieces of fabric. Now, using this big ruler right here would be awkward to cut a two inch squares. It's doable and if that's what you have out, you should use it. But I also have a six and a half inch ruler. You just want a smaller one. It's easier to use and um, gives you a better result, I think, more accurate. So I'm putting this down and making two inch squares. I need 12 of them, so that means I need to cut six of them off this strip. So there's two, four, six, seven, 
8. Ten, twelve. Now I have my twelve two inch blocks. This is block A. And if you have little post it notes and you want to mark them and label them as A, you can. I'm just going to lay them out on my table so that I know that they go in order A, B, C, like that. Because we're going to cut it and sew it all at one time. If I was going to come back to it, I would label them. But I'm not going to do it this time. I'll just take time. So now we're ready for the background fabric because I'm going to cut use the background fabric to cut B, C, and D before I change fabric. So I'm going to go grab my background fabric. Okay, this is the cream fabric that I was talking about. I didn't show you in the introductory video, but here it is. And um, it's got salvage on both ends. This is salvage to salvage and it's probably just over a third of a yard. And I'm putting it, lining up the salvages together. I've ironed it and I've torn it. I actually tore it off the bolt so I know this is the straight of grain and it makes a hot mess. So I will just try and stay out of its way. So now I need to cut the pieces are eight pieces that are two by three and a half. Okay. So I'm actually going to cut to measure how long this is. And I, let's um, do the math the easy way. I can do it over here where I'm out of the way of the camera. 14 inches. So that's seven. I get seven and I only need eight of them. Okay, so um, and it's doubled, which so that would be 14. So I can definitely cut it this way, cut the three and a half inches off, and cut the, it two inches apart. So that's why I'm going to choose to just leave the fabric oriented this way. Though I'm going to take a look down on the pattern. The next thing I have to cut is two inch squares, so I should be able to get those out of it too potentially. And then I need, but I need one four and a quarter inch square cut on the diagonal twice to make the D pieces. All right, so I think I will leave it this orientation. I'm gonna move this out of my way. Over, actually, yeah, I'll move it way over here. So now I'm going to cut off my salvages, and I know the camera can't see past there, so I'm sliding it up. And now I'm going to cut off my salvages. These salvages go a little deeper. This is a Kona cotton, so I'm taking a bigger bite out of it. And I also have those other back quarters I can use for backgrounds, so I'm not worried. I'm taking that out of the way, it could be like, was it Eleanor Burns that threw the things over her shoulder? But I'm not going to make a mess on my floor right now. Anyway, all right, so it was two by three and a half, so I'm coming over three and a half. This ruler has a half inch extra on one side. Black dots mean read black. So I'm going to move it over here, put the three and a half on the edge of the fabric, start off and end off. Okay. Now this is a nice clean cut, and I know I'm not going to get every two inch square I want out of that, but I might, so I'm not going to cut another two inch strip, but I know I need the four and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead, turn my ruler around, cut four and a quarter off here before I go anywhere and cut and do some downsizing. Now I can move this out of the way for later. And since I have the four and a quarter here, it's sort of out of order, which is not like me. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to trim my messy edge here where I tore it off and I'm going to cut my four and a quarter inch square. Now I can use my smaller ruler, okay, and I'm going to put the four and a quarter on the edge right here. So now I only need one of them, okay, and I need to cut it on. This is making piece D. I have to look where it is. That's, I'll show you later. I only need one, so I'm going to save that for later. And now I'm going to cut it on the diagonal twice. Now, if this is, if you had one of those rotating mats, you could do that. It might be easier, but I'm just going to do some gyrations with my body here. So I'm putting it on the corner. You could, let me just show you a trick. If you line this up on the line on the corners on lines on the mat, you know whether you moved it. 
okay? So I'm putting it on a line, on a line. So now I can put it on here and I can actually use the lines with my rotary cutter. So putting it on there, cutting it this way. Now I'm putting it on here, the other direction. I'm going to give a little secret. You don't have to be 100% perfect because there's a little wiggle rim in the seam allowance. But if you get, if I say that and now you cut way off, you're going to have a hot mess. So there are my four pieces. This is my piece D. So I'm putting it over in my stack that you can't see. It's hidden. It's a secret stash. Okay. So now I have my piece here. This is my piece B that I cut the three and a half off and I'm now going to just do the two inch cuts from here. So I'm going to put cut my rough edge off so that I know I have right both two pieces of fabric. Okay. And now I just need two inch strips. I'm cutting one. Okay, that's two of them. Two. Each time I cut, I get two. Two. Four. Six. Eight. Now, if you care about whether or not your fabric's all facing, like you have the same as the right side up, you can take the bottom ones right now and flip them over and you know both of them are right side up. Truthfully, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't really um, care. I'm just doing this to show you this trick because some of the white on whites, they're really hard to tell when you sew. This is a solid, it's the same on both sides, but that's a little trick. All right, now I also need eight two inch squares. I know I'm only going to get two from each one of these that I do, so I'm going to need some more, but there's one set, and I can rotate it and get another one. I'm actually just going to put that little piece out because who knows, I might need more later. So there's another one. That's all I'm going to get from this. Rotate it, make sure they're lined up. So I have four, so I need four more. Here's where I cut off from my four and a quarter. So I don't need both of those on there. If we want it right side up, I didn't bother with the other pieces just to show you. I'm going to put that on here. So that's going to make two. And that's going to make two. So now I can stack them right on top of each other. Make sure they're perfectly lined up. And I'm going to put right here and there's two more and two more look my little quarter of an inch who knew it was so little okay I now have them in order invisibly seen probably out of the camera all right so I've now done B C and D I'm now on fabric E which is no longer the background it's now the navy. So it's B, C, D, and actually E. No, E is the... Okay, it's just the same size. So this is extra. This is piece E. This is going to make some triangles. And we need a four and a quarter inch square, just like we did, but we actually need two of them. So I know that this is the this is the 18 inch direction, so I'm going to use that. I can get two squares out of it. All right, I have, I'm going to slightly overcut it. I'm going to cut four and a half inches off because it's not perfectly straight. And then I'm going to turn it around, just move this out of the way. I can get both those pieces out of it. I can rotate it and bring it down to the four and a quarter. Okay. I'm just going to show you, this is the ruler that has the extra half inch, and it gets confusing. White reads white, so I know I'm four and a quarter. You should check me, you guys. All right, the ruler moved at the end there, so uh, it's a little nerve-wracking being on camera. All right, and now I'm going to see how accurate I can make this four and a quarter here. 
So I'm just putting the straight line on there, rotating it, and rotating it again. Trim that little bit off so now I know it's a solid square. And okay, I'm going to trim it off with my scissors and left the little fuzz there. There we go. All right, now I'm going to do four and a quarter here. Okay, it's my little trash pile here. So I'll just clean it up right now. Okay, now it tells me after I've cut them to cut diagonally twice to make four triangles. Okay. No, if I twice, it'll make eight triangles. Okay, good math, Janet. All right, I think you were a math teacher or something. All right, so now I'm putting that on there. Okay, I'm putting it on the corners, corner to corner. And now I'm going to rotate the ruler. I'm actually using a big one to show you that I had to dance. Well, I don't know if you could see I had to dance out of the way of it. You could actually disturb things. But there we go. There's our eight. Okay, there's a little glitch in my blade. Next time I go to self, use new blade. So, two, four, six, eight. Okay, so I did piece E. Now I'm on F, and it's the beige fabric that I'm going to use. So it's back to the it's back to the bird fabric. Bring it back over. And I don't have any scrap from it because I used one whole clean cut. All right. And um, I'm trying to remember which end I cut off. That would be smart. I think it was this end, right? Nope. Doesn't matter. We'll square we have to square it up. We moved it anyway. I, I can actually tell right now. It's right over here. So, um, beige, we need four, two, and five eighths inch squares. Okay? Hmm. Must be making half square triangles, that's what I say. So we're gonna actually do it the two and five eighths. I sometimes oversize them so that um, but right now I don't see where they're going to be. Um, so I'm just gonna check here. Just wants the four, two and five eighths inch squares, and this is piece F. Nope, they're not cut, so we have to do them accurately, two and five eighths. So we're going to use the white side because we need the 5 eighths. So 2 and 5 eighths is the skinny line just beyond the half inch mark. So here is the half inch line. It's white on my ruler, white with white. Okay, and now I'm just going over one little tick. I wonder if it's easier if I point out like this. One little tick. That's the eighth. Okay, so... That's the two and five eighths. And I can tell that I'm accurately on up there. I'm just going to shift it up there. And I can see that I'm not down here at the bottom. Mm, pretty close. So we'll just test it out. All right. I need only four of them. I will definitely get four out of that. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And now I'm going back to my little ruler. So much easier, so much more manageable. Two and five eighths. Okay, so two and five eighths. I'm just using this as a straight line up there and making the two and five eighths right on the top left corner. And I'm looking down to make sure there's fabric all the way around, all the way underneath, and there is. But I am going to have to rotate it because it's not square. So I'm putting it back on there, two and five eighths. And this ruler is really handy dandy. It gives you a little notch to put it in. And you can see I had to cut this little sliver off. There's one. How many did I need? Four. One. Okay, two and five eighths. Now I can just put that little two and five eighths in the bottom corner and everything should line up. One, two. Three. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna make sure it's right. Four. Okay. 
There we go. That's the next one. Okay, that's extra. We'll save it for a future block. And now we're on G, which is back to the background, and we need four, two, and three eighths, two and three eighths inch squares. So let's see if we can cut it from this four and a quarter piece. So three eighths is one eighth over a quarter. Okay, so it's the first line, little line past the quarter, one quarter mark. So I'm cutting this here, all right, and I'm going to see, I need four of them. I'm just going to do it this way and see how many I can get from this. Two. I might be, oh no, I won't be able to. I can do that math. So there's three. And I have the, that's just the other piece that we cut from last time. Four. Okay. So now we rotate this, and if you're really tricky <laughs> or have a good blade, oh, shocker, I don't think I do, but I'm going to do it anyway. There's two. I'm stacking them right up on top of each other. And you can see I'm carefully lining everything up. That's what I want to do. Carefully line it up. There we go. And now I can do my two and three eighths. And the only problem with doing that is if you mess up, you mess up every single one that you have. Putting those back with my extra pieces that always come in handy. Now it says to cut them once on the diagonal. So they're all lined up. I'm just going corner to corner. There we go. Eight. One last thing. Three and a half inch square and I just wanted to show you something. One of the prints, really cool, had these ships in it and I figured a three and a half inch square we might be able to fussy cut something. So they both go up right side up and upside down and these two ships are mirrored to each other right side up and upside down. So given we don't know the orientation the block's going to go, I might see if I can put them in a three and a half inch square. So the way I'm going to check that out, well actually I don't want to waste a lot of fabric. So that being said, I'm going to move down to the bottom here. Okay, and I'm going to put this little ruler on here. And you can put painter's tape or something on here. I can see the three and a half is right here, but I also have the half on the ruler, just like I had on the other one. And look, it's marking three and a half. So I can actually see what will be inside the square. So I am centering these double ships right there, and I have the double ships right in there, three and a half, to sort of took the mass off that one, so I'm sort of centering the mass on the top ship. Now I know when I sew, I can see the quarter inch line, and it's going to chop off some of them. So I'm going to say, do I really like that, or do I want to move over here, where this little ship is, okay, and center it in the three and a half inch square. But I think, truthfully, I'm just going to go with this baby right here. Okay, top and bottom, it's right there. Now, half of three and a half, okay, is one and three quarters, right? So if I put the, the center of the, this area on one and three quarters, okay, so here I'm just moving this around to see what the middle, let's see what the middle of this is. I guess it's easier for me to do it with the whole numbers. The middle is roughly one and a half and a little bit more, let's see, one. So roughly this mast is almost the middle. So if I put the one and three quarters on that, it's actually over a little bit more. So now we're going to see how much of the ship I can get in there, up and down. All right, I'm going for it. Centered it as best I can in there. We'll either like it or we won't going up and over so I can move the fabric out of the way. There are the sh two ships. I'll put it back in where you can see it better. And now I'm going to put the three and a half on here like this. 
and I'm going to go up and across closing my rotary cutter and there is the ships beautiful we now have all the blocks done start all right now it's time to sew the block we finished cutting all our pieces and I've organized them here I don't know how, how well you can see it but it doesn't really matter I have them in alphabetical order A B C D E F G H so I can remember hopefully I can remember my alphabet better than I remembered my math okay so now the first set of instructions says to sew A to C so A my A pieces to C pieces and I'm making four patches with them so I need to take an A piece and a background C piece and I'm going to put them right sides together and truthfully make sure that they're sitting right on top of each other so it looks like one square doesn't matter which way right sides together you've all done this a million times um, it's not going to matter which side you sew on this isn't directional my fabrics not directional so it doesn't matter you're just going to sew one side because we're making a nine um, we're just making a four patch so I'm going to sew all these together. Very boring for you to watch, but when we're chatting on Tuesday, which is when you're actually seeing this, um, we will be talking over it, hopefully. And maybe you can fast forward. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just sewing straight down my quarter inch seam. When I get to the end, I'm stopping. I'm doing what's called chain piecing. So I'm putting them right sides together. Sometimes I stack a whole bunch of them right sides together so I can just pick it up and go. So I'm going to do that. I think it will ultimately make me faster. Right sides together. This will be an interesting test whether I was truly right about whether um, this Kona cotton that I have is really... Um, it's a solid, whether it truly is, you know, they dyed the fiber or whether they... I don't know what they, how they did the dyeing. So anyway, I need a total of four four patches. i got to read that, four four patches, which means I need eight pairs. And, oh, shocker, we have, we cut eight squares, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there's seven. And there's eight. These are extra for later, I'm getting them out of the way so I don't accidentally try and sew them to something. The beeping is my iron in the background telling me it's no longer hot, but we'll warm it up when we're done and I will press these. Okay, so just chaining them right along, making sure, of course, now that I lined them up, I have to I want to make sure when they go under they're actually safe and um, straight, done, lined up neatly. Okay, and now I now I just kind of wonder what like Jenny feels like she's doing that. They have that fast forward zoom. Maybe by the third or fourth one, we can just like do that snap your finger and then they're all done. So we'll get better at this. This is the first one, and you know that I don't mind making a fool out of myself because I do it just about every time we get together. So um, anyway, I'm doing the best I can. And the whole idea of this is just to have fun, maybe some, you know, and maybe we'll learn some new techniques along the way as we go. And um, so, okay, I've now chain pieced them. What I do to keep my chain piecing going is, I don't know what this is called, I just have this little scrap piece of fabric that I use. You can tell sometimes I've started after a boo-boo. I give it a little trim when I first start. And then I just run that in. So I'm continuing to chain piece it does waste less thread okay now I'm just snipping them apart and so that I can get them all made and we can be done with step one I'm going to take these over to the iron now I am going to tell you that when I take them over to the iron I'm gonna iron them all the same way because they will nest then when I sew them together and I will show that to you oh, oh I thought I forgot that one it's just I have such perfect color thread. Uh, you might want to know what color thread I'm using. That's a good question. I'm using gray. I pretty much always use a, like a neutral color thread. I either use an off-white or I use a gray. I'm using the gray because it happened to be what's in my machine, not because I specially thought about this project.
Okay, I will be right back after I iron. Okay, I'm back from the iron, ready to rock and roll. So here you can see I've put the two together. I've now got them nested together. Now, if you sew, so on, um, when you sew the down, the seam here, okay, I'm going to sew down the seam. If you have it so that the top, um, let me see how to explain it, this flap is going into the machine. It pushes it against the bump that's on the bottom and you get a more accurate, you can't always do this, but um, in this case we can, you get a more accurate seam. It and the likelihood is that they will match right there and you won't have a space, okay? So it's a little trick somebody showed me. We're gonna try. If you have trouble, you can pin, okay? I'm just going for it. If I have a gap, I have a gap. We'll test it. I'll sew a few of them in before um, we, um, as I, so I can check them and make sure that that's right. Okay, I'm flipping it over. I, I want the beige on top, that's what's giving me the piece. I, I pressed them all towards the darker fabric. That's what I did, all the same direction, putting them in there. Once I get the next one out, I'll clip it, whip it, oh, well, because I don't want to do them all if it's not working. And um, now I'm going to just separate this right here. And I'm going to pop it open. I'm going to look first. Oh, then I'm going to show you the trick works, okay? So now it worked on that one. Who knows, you know, maybe I won't be so lucky the next time. So I'm just sewing them together. I need four of them, four corners to the block. It's kind of amazing all these little pieces we cut and they're all going to go together. And hopefully we're going to have, the block's going to be right, the right size. And by the way, if it's not, I'm not telling you what size my block is. No, just kidding. I will tell you. Oh, I think I just sewed this one the other way. Now we'll see if it's done. If it works, I did. I sewed that, that one the other way. I don't think it matters. We're going to have to check that baby out. But I'm pretty sure it might matter. So I have to flip it around so it's going the right way. All right. I will check them out. I have my little tail to sew in there. It's really fun when you um, do those little feeders. When you change your thread color, because then they get really, they get really fun. All right, that one I did that way. This is the one I did the other way. Nope, it worked too. So there you have, there you have it. And then hopefully, it will orient right. All right, I'm taking these to the iron. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've done step one. We've done step two. We've made our four patch units. I think they look pretty good. Now we're gonna do step. Three, we're going to sew the four remaining squares so that we can make our three steps down. And we're going to add the B's with it. And I need four of them. One, two, three, four, four here, and four here. That We're making this unit right here. That's what we're going to do. So in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is sew this bar onto this rectangle onto this square and we're going to sew this square onto this rectangle. So given these are closer to me, move my scissors out of the way, I'm just going to flip this over and this is the important part. You can't rotate it now and change your mind and go this direction. You have to leave them the same direction. I mean, I suppose technically you could, you just have to switch how you did this up here, but that's okay. Right now we're just going to do them all the same. It's much easier. You don't have to think about it. Okay, so I'm sliding this under here. And stitching it. I'm going to do all four of these. One. Flip this one on. And I line it up here. You're finding that mine is working, okay? If yours doesn't match, let's say yours hangs over a little bit. If yours hangs over a little bit, it means your quarter of an inch is too big. If this doesn't fit in here and it's too short, it means your quarter of an inch is too little. So this should fit just perfectly on here. And if it is off only by a sliver, don't lose sleep, just keep going, okay? And, um, We'll move on from there. We, we can adjust it in the next piece, okay? But 
This is a good test of your quarter inch seam allowance because there's no trimming down on this. It should match exactly. It's kind of like making the log cabin block. You, they all need to, they all nestle, they all need to fit. So, truth is either your cutting's off or your sewing's off, but I know you guys cut really well, so it's probably your quarter inch seam if they're off. All right, now, there we go. This is done. Now, given that this is a solid and um, this one, is, you don't have to be as worried about the side. I picked up two here. Um, but we're just going to sew this down. We're going to pick them up and sew them the way we had them. And I'm going to lay it down and show you how I figure out how to press. Because, you know, I said um, press to the dark fabric if you can, but mostly you want to press for the least bulk. But we want to have these nestled just like the other two nestled for the four patch. So that's what we're going to think about when we're pressing. So I only have one more after this. And we're good. I need my little tail again. I'm gonna run that through. Oh, that was a Ricky racer right there. Now I'm gonna cut them apart. Stack the ones that are alike on top of each other. A little scissors right there. Okay, here we have the next section. Okay, so we had this set up this way and we sewed it on and we flipped this on okay if I press this out and I press this out they won't line up I have a seam right here so it would be harder for me to press this one this way it make it just a little bulkier there's no seam here so it makes sense to press this seam toward the background so that's what I'm going to do and I will bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like okay I'm back. All right, here we go. So I can show you. I'm just going to stack them sort of so I can pick them up. And I'll just pull one off. And you can see that they end up both being pressed towards the background fabric. And that way when I drop it down, we have the same nesting situation going. This time, this is one of those situations where we're not going to, we can't flip it over to have that um, open edge or the so that it pushes it in. This way it could push it off. So I'm actually, this time, going to put a little pin here because it will then, um, should stop it from doing that, all right? And if you want, you can add another pin to the end. I'm not going to, but you can see it fits. Yay! Okay. And I'm just going to pin them all before I start sewing because I I'm like don't like to stop and pin. I am just make sure that's really tightly nestled. I'm going to stick in a pin. All right, now I'm putting the next one in right here. So that goes right there. And um, we're putting the last pin in right here. I have to say a big thank you to my uh, video videographer, I guess is that the word you use? My daughter is doing it. Now look at this one. This one, I'm looking at this and it's a little off. See right here? This is a good example of a boo-boo. Somehow something got off here. It could be my pressing. So I'm putting a pin here, okay? Now I'm going to see, look how much off this baby is. So somewhere there is a mistake here and we need to fix that. Could be that if you look, it slipped right there. Okay, you can see that it slipped. You can see the white is showing there from under that. So I need to go back and rip out a little bit and then sew it in. But I will leave that there and I will fix it when you're not watching. No, I will let you see me fix it. So this one, I'm going to put a little pin down here because this one is maybe a little bit wobbly too. Okay, here we go. I'm not afraid to use pins. You know, got to use them to make it look good. Stitching around. Okay. Right. 
this one fits nicely, but just to hold it there, because you know, you could just watch me make all kinds of mistakes today. So here we go. Put this one under here. There's no here. Here's living dangerously. Only one pin. All right. There we go. Now, I'm going to rip that one part out. I will rip it out first and then take it back and press it. So I'm just going to get this started. A few. I just. This is what I do. I just stick it right under there. Press it a few times. Okay. And I'm just taking this out. This part was actually okay. It just was when I got to here that the... I should, but maybe I'm going to have to pin this one. I'm just going every few, sliding it under. I think when this all releases, I'm going to have to go to the eye doctor and get a better prescription for my reading glasses. You know? Who knows? Alright. So, now, truly, when I go to pull it, it just comes right apart. All right, I'm going to take this back to the iron because I want it nice and crisp. When you rip something out, you really need to pull all the little threads out. Now I'm being like Eleanor Burns and throwing the threads on my floor. Oh, who's the one who's going to clean it up? Me. That is the way it goes, but at least I know I put them down there. All right, so now I need to make sure that these are all oriented the same way because now I've taken it out. So to do that, I'm going to um, take this and uh, take these off the machine and take a look at which way it's oriented. So here's my piece here, okay, and I had it going this way. So now I'm putting it right back the correct way. All right, and I'm flipping this over, and I'm going to put a pin in here so that it stays in the right place, right here. There we go. And now I'm gonna, I can just start it in the right place up here with the white, the white on the white. All right, here we go. Here's hoping that that truly was the boo-boo. But I think it was. You can see that it's hitting a different, well, I can see. You probably can't see. I'm just gonna put this under so I can keep chain piecing. Clip it out. I do have to go back to the iron and press this one. I'll be right back. Now, oh my goodness, it fits. What a shocker. It's amazing what a little thing like that will do. I have this pin here. I don't want to lose track of it. And I'll put this right here. All right, here we go. Stitch this baby down. Let's make sure. All flat. This is what happens when you just get crazy. All right. All right. Now, I assume we'll be able to chain piece the next thing, so I'm going to run that through and off to the iron. This time, I'm just going to press this away like this. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, press it closed, then press it open. I'll bring it right back. It's our piece that we've done. Now, I noticed in the instructions they tell you that what the measurement is. I'm just going to measure mine to see how close it is. Just to test it out. And it is five inches square. Pretty square. Which is what they say it's supposed to be for the 12... 12 inch block, 5 by 5, unfinished, 4 and a half finished, and that's what I have. Thank goodness, because I would be really embarrassed if I didn't. There we go. Okay. They have a little checkpoint. If a pattern gives you a checkpoint, please use it, because if you, uh, you can use my Easter bunnies, and I can tell you, I didn't do that when I made my Easter bunnies, and that was a hot mess. All right, so, and I quilted it, just saying. Now we are on to step five, and it says using triangle D, okay, and um, E, one triangle D, 
two triangle E's, and one F square. So now here's the tricky part. We have to remember we took our pieces from here. So we had to go like this was A. Okay. I can actually go back to my instructions. This is where if you put a post-it note on, it actually is easier than remeasuring them. But I have it right here on the directions. So we know A was the little this square, okay? B was the rectangles, okay? C and D were these squares, okay? So we've used all the pieces down to here. So we know that this is now E, okay? And we are looking for, um, we are using, we need one triangle B, so we're doing it four times, so we need all four of them, and two E triangles, which would be these triangles, and one F square, which must be this square right here, okay? And we are putting together this funky, I'm going to bring this over so that you can actually see it. We're making this funky unit right here. Is it better? Yeah. My assistant is going to hold it so you can actually see it. All right. That's what we're making. Go figure. We can do it. Stick with me. Okay. So this is my F and it literally is like going on point. And we're going to add these. Okay. So now to do it the most accurate way, we're going to take it and we're going to fold it in half and we're going to just put a little pinch here. And I just really, it's like scoring it. And you can see how you can, I don't know if you can see that very well, okay. but you can see that edge. We're going to do the same thing with our triangle. Okay? We're going to score. And we're scoring the long side, not the two short sides. Okay? This is math terms. It's the hypotenuse. Okay? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, you didn't need the math lesson, but you got it anyway. All right, now I have to find the side that I did it. We're going to put those two scored pieces, edges together, and now we've centered it. It's really important to do this. Don't just go, oh, I can center it, okay, because you can't. Now, this to me is looking way too big, which says to me I switched my pieces around when I was moving them. So I am wondering about this. And I'm actually thinking these are my pieces that I want, but because this looks like actually these are the G triangles, which are these. Okay, I didn't read far enough in the directions. This is making me feel a lot better and stupid at the same time. So we're just going to take these. We're using the smaller of the background triangles. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold it on the hypotenuse. And we're going to put it right there, and I'm going to put a pin in there, and you're going to see how much better it looks, okay? We don't care about the little tails. I'm going to show you. We don't care about these tails that are sticking out, okay? In a perfect world, it would land a quarter inch away. We're not living in a perfect world, and mine aren't going to do that, okay? So I'm going to pin um, four of them. I'm going to set them up. I'm going to do the scoring. And we're going to get four pinned so that we can chain this one side. And you're going to do one side, all of one side, and then all of another side. And if you score them, one going one way and one going the other way, so this, the, this is wrong sides together and this is right sides together, it, they will nestle like a little bowl in there. It's much easier. Um, they just sort of fall right in, right there. They fall right in. Okay, so now I'll do the next one. And creasing this all. Okay, and then we have this one. Given that this is a solid, it doesn't matter which way it is. So, but I can see my little crease. So. It's hard, you know, it's hard to see, but this way you know you've centered both pieces. All right, last one. There it is. They sell those tools. I, I probably have one, a hair marker, I think it's called. People use that. I, I've never actually, truth be told, I've never really used it. I was told to use it in one class, and then I did it my way. Probably should have practiced with it. 
um, probably would have been better. Okay, so now I'm just going to sew a quarter inch away. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. Then I'm actually going to read the directions and see which way they say to press this. I guess I sort of always decide I know best, which isn't true. And uh, gets me in trouble sometimes. But these just go right in. Okay. I swear, as we go down the road, you know, maybe I'll do that snap the finger thing so you don't have to watch me sew, like, multiples of things. But right now, this way, we have all the time to chat with each other. And if you get bored, you can um, start sewing and doing your own thing at the same time. Okay, there we go. Now I'll pull this. I've got that sliding under the pattern here. I've got my little oh, magnetic scissors. Magnetize them somehow. All right. There we go. Now it says, let's see what in the directions it says. All right, press, the diagrams indicate the piecing method, arrows indicate the pressing instructions. So these say to press out, or press away from the square. So we're going to press the triangles away from the square. All right, so I'm going to go do that, and I will be right back. Okay, so now I'm ready. Okay. And... You can see that there's these little tails hanging on there. In my world, I leave them hanging on there, okay? And I trim them when I'm done, but you don't wanna leave them in there when you're quilting. It'll, they'll show up, actually. Okay, so now we need to pick, we can pick either this side or this side. It doesn't matter, we just need, they need to connect with each other. They need to be on the same side. But by pressing this way, we can still find that middle and we can put it right there and I intentionally picked a non-directional fabric from my fat quarter things for these blocks because then it didn't matter which way I did it. Okay, same thing, we found the center. Okay, like this. And I'm actually going to put another one right here so that when I hit that bump, it's going straight. Okay. I'm going to flip this over so you can see that I'm lining up the edges of the fabric there. And then taking the next one and I'm putting it there. Sticking it in there. This one, I'm going to do the second ten. Okay, now... We will see if this will look good. I hope you like my colors. Tell me what you think. Make sure you tell me what you think. All right, uh, this one, look at this. We're almost, we're shrinking down the total number of free pieces here. Isn't that great? We just have these four, those eight. <laughs> okay, but we had a lot more when we started. Okay, oh, I already did that one. Shocker, I forgot, okay. Now, this right here. And put the pin right here. Now, we'll sew these down, same way we sewed the other ones.
Okay, when I do this next one, I'm going to show you, I'm going to have my daughter zoom in on this section where it comes off, because if you're sewing a true quarter inch seam, this one, when you come off it on the triangle, will fall right in the notch, right in the notch. And I'll show you the notch right here. It falls right in this notch right here should be a quarter inch away that from that edge and mine has fallen there so that's a good sign it means I probably won't have to rip out and embarrass myself again and we'll see though this is the last one this is the proof from the pudding it also means that you found the center because if you don't find the center it won't be there either okay so you do need to find that center there are a couple reasons why it could be off so the next time we videotape, I'm heating up my workaround around beforehand because it got really cold in here and it's just beginning to feel a little okay. So we are working in the cold. All right, I'm going to iron these. It says to press them out, but we don't need this tail anymore. I don't know. It's just an extra thing. So you can go over your trash barrel and clip them off like this. Just clip them off before you press the next piece, okay? Otherwise, it ends up as a lump inside your quilt. Okay, so I'm just cutting them right there. Just use my scissors, actually. And I'm going to pick up my trash right here. So it's off our viewing area. All right, I'll be back. I'm just gonna iron these. Okay, we are ready for the next step. And I can see on my picture, they're actually facing this direction. And if you want, you can cut this little tail off now. So it's going straight across. I'm just going to do it because it annoys me. And can you see my little type anus is coming out? All right. There we go. Now, you can see I have it oriented the way the picture is. And we bring our E one. And now we're going to be working with the shorter side of the E, not the hypotenuse. The um, so what we're going to do is the seam. Oh my gosh, it's a seam technique. We're just going to fold this in half, find that center, and we're going to put this down. We have the shorter side now, okay? And if, I, if this is right, we're just going to do this old test. If this is right, I'm putting this shorter. Let's see, we want it, we want it to go here like this. So I'm flipping it over. And truthfully, you can just line, you don't need to do that. I'm, I'm just, I realize that this would work. You can just line this up with this corner right here. Okay? Just line it up so the rectangle sits on top. This is what it looks like, like a little house. Can you see this? It looks like That's a little there. house. Okay? All right, and I'm sewing down the side. I'm going to sew down this side. All right? Because what we want is for this to look like the picture. All right. Okay. Oh, and this one, so we, can, we can stack them so that they're they're going the right way. All right. If she gives a measurement for this one, we'll have to see. This one's just, it's not hard. You just have to take your time and stitch right along. Okay, these are other four for the other side. We'll go on the other side. But I'm not sure how we line them up. They, they must have a trick for the other side. So I'm going to do the trick, whatever it is. This one side first. Okay, I need to get my little tail here. Usually I have a bunch of them lined up, but of course today when I'm filming I don't. I will next time. Alright, then I can just clip it off on the time. Done. Alright, they say on the directions. 
Ah, they didn't say which way to press, but I'm guessing we press away. It's just a little X there, not an arrow. So that's showing, yep, there's an arrow showing away on the second picture. Ah, here I am looking up there, but that's because after you sew, you press. Go figure. Go figure. Okay. We have this side done, and we're going to put it right back, all four of them. I'm just lining them up. They're sort of being tricky with me. Now, we can clip these tails off, okay? And I'm just doing it on this side because we're going to use this point probably to line it up when we sew that together. So, I'm just putting them together like this. I promise I'll clean up my table. Alright, so that looks nice and neat right there. And now they're asking us to sew. If you see if we slide it in here to make the piece, that's what it looks like. But what they want us to do is to sew these two together first. And then we're going to do that nesting thing. So when we sew it together like this, um, I'm just lining them one on top of the other. And I'm flipping it over because I like to start with the flat side first. And that's the only reason I'm flipping it over. You can start with the point if you want. I'm not. I'm just starting with the flat side first. Okay, and then I'm going to clip this off so it's ready at the end. All right, now I'm going to do this, the same thing each time. Okay, flip it, and then I'm putting it over so I can start coming on the flat side rather than the point. Okay, and if I cut these perfectly, see, I didn't really cut these perfectly. We're hoping for the best. All right. Your machine, by the way, can stitch a few a short distance without any fabric under it. So, like I'm coming off that point, and when I do the next one, I'm not worried that this is a flat edge and that's coming off a point. It can handle it just fine until you want to stitch under the next section. Right under there. Okay, last one, number four. Bring it together, and then we're going to press it towards the navy um, triangle. Because this one is pressed toward the navy triangle, and they will nest. Yay! Okay. By the way, I'm using Stitch Length 2.0 because on my machine, the one under 2.5 is 2.0. Some of you have 2.3. You can use whatever you want. I just would shorten it from 2.5. I like 2.0. More and more people are using it now. I like it because when you snip it across, you don't have as long a loose tail. Okay, here we go. Okie dokie. Now, if we line these up, we can see that it's going to fit. Yay! All right, so I'm going to pin all four of these. This time I'm matching it, and this time when we stitch, we're going to have it the right way. So this flops up, it's going to push against it. Totally awesome. Bring my pin cushion over. It's easier than continuing to reach. Okay, and now I'm lining that up as best as it lines up, hoping for the best. Remember I showed you some of mine weren't cut exactly perfectly on the point. And I just want to show you how much forgiveness there is in a quilt project and how to fix something like that. I'd, I'd like to say I did it on purpose, but the truth is I didn't. And I'm just, these are like what I call happy accidents because see, this one matches perfectly. So just um, the way it happened. But it's important to print, to, um, to use pins, really. I mean, you see me and when I'm working, sometimes I don't. And it really depends on if there's a matching point. If there's a matching point, I pretty much you pretty much see me use pins. Um, sometimes I live dangerously. But if you live dangerously, you end up ripping out, which is fine too. Okay, here we go. Last one. Four. And then look at this. We're going to be down to... Um, just the one center square, and it's going to go together like a nine patch, really. I'm going to show you that.
truly these nesting ones really you can probably have it work without the pins. All right. As soon as I tell you that though. Okay, so now I'm putting this down, I'm stitching this right down. I think Kimberly on the back quarter shop is doing the same She's doing the mode of blockheads three. Also, she's not doing a tutorial on it, but she sh showed her blocks, and I think she might have even done this one on the smaller side, a better, stronger person than I had. This, I don't think I would have done this many little pieces. If you have trouble holding these pieces together, you can use the edge of your scissors. You can use your seam ripper. Sometimes they tend to come apart as you're coming to the end. I, when I, if I notice it consistently happening, I try and do something like that. Okay, here we are. So now separate them. So we can iron. This says to press toward this piece that's on top. But before we do that, we're going to cut our little tails off because they'll be hidden under there. And you'll go, I don't have to cut them off. And truly, you should. That's my daughter's phone, just making her embarrassed. She's actually doing an amazing job with the camera. She's telling me we need to go to my cousin's birthday dinner, which is canceled because we can't go anywhere. <laughs> this is true. Oh well, saved a drive. Was that and um, where's your cousin? And Marguerite. Mar oh, Marguerite, our cousin Marguerite in Hampshire. Yes, we did cancel that. Okay, I'm pressing this way. Okay, so here we go. This is the new piece. This is what it looks like. All those little triangles went into it. It wasn't too hard. I think you'll be able to do it very successfully. And now we will trim these little dog ears off. Okay? We don't need them for lining up anything. And um, there's three of them on each block. But we don't want the extra bulk for your long armor. Just saying. Okay. All right. Now I will show you. This one didn't perfectly line up, but I'm not taking it out. Okay? I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to zoom in so you can see in all my glory that it's not. But I'm just going to leave that because I don't think anybody staring at this quilt with all these blocks is going to notice that. So, let's orient everything the correct way because the t moment of truth is to put our block together to sew it together. So, get the scissors out of the way. We're going to lay it. We need two... Four. So, this, we're making one block, so this is going to go here, like this, okay? Here's our beautiful fussy cut block right there, okay? And then, this goes in the middle, so these are going like this. Okay, now I will show you one thing that I think is important. This could go like this, okay? And the four squares on the outside, right? 
it doesn't matter. Truthfully, it doesn't matter. But they all need to be the same way. And personally, I just think it reads better going this way. Okay? So, this is how it works. What I'm going to do is sew this to this and this to this. I'm going to give you a little hint here. These are the matching points. These are the points that are going to make a difference to you right there. All right? Because it's what's going to make this a sharp point for the star right here. Okay? And this may be a little bigger. So let's just see if they give a finished size. So it says 12 inch block, 3.5 by 5 unfinished. So I'm actually going to take my pieces right now. I'm going to pull these out and make sure that we are the right size because if we're not those it's going to be tricky there so this ruler will work it said which means this should measure three and a half by five so if I put the three and a half on there and the five these are three and a half by five and you can see that pretty much I'm a quarter inch away quarter inch away from there and a quarter inch away from there. So I'm just measuring this one. I'm assuming that since everything lined up, all the other ones are correct. And truly, it's really bothering me, but I'm sewing it together. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm sewing it together. Just saying, it's really bothering me. <laughs> all right, putting it back together. Maybe you won't see me in the middle of the night. I'll get up, rip it out, and fix it. Nope, I want you to check me later. And see, okay, there's our little ship in the middle, our mirrored ship. I think it looks really good, but then I made it. So I'm going to show you now how to pin so that you catch that point, okay? Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be how you sew to catch that point. And the truth is, if you have a straight quarter-inch seam, it should just work fine. So I'm going to sew, flip this one over, and I'm going to... Pin this in the corner, right here, and then I'm going to pin this up here like this. Actually, look at this. This is just a little bit longer. I'm just showing you this is a little longer here. And I want this, actually I want this point to match this seam right here. So I am going to do that. And that the amount that it's off, if I split it, I think it will end up being split. Okay, so I'm putting that pin right there, so that point is with that seam, okay? And now we can see where it's off. It's really sort of off on this, but it's not off the whole way, it's only off a little part of the way. So it will be caught in the seam allowance, and I'll try and show you that. Go figure. Who else airs all their dirty laundry on here? Okay, all right. This one, here we go. What you don't want to do is pull that so to make it match, okay? I just want it to be squared up, all right? And you can see that when it lays flat, it works out. That little sliver will be in the seam allowance. This little sliver will be in the seam allowance. Nobody, when the quilt's sewn together, will ever know that you, like, fudged it right there, okay? So now I'm going to flip this one. This is going to just be centered here in the center, and I'm going to put a pin in there, right in the center. There's that one. And now this one's flipping over, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick the pin through the point, right through that point. Okay, I'm making sure the point lines up. Oh, looks pretty good. Move it over just a tiny bit. I swear it's my glasses. Okay. And I wanted this. This was facing out. I just want to make sure I'm putting it on the right piece. And then I'm putting this right here. I'm guessing where the quarter inch is. You could put a little piece of tape or something. I don't know. And it, you just want that pin straight up and down. Before I pull it out, I'm going to put another one there. Oh, this one matches. Go figure. Okay. So they're not all off, just a little bit. All right, I'm going to put this pin. So now I'm going to sew these pieces straight down. Okay. Now, what you don't want to do is aim for that 
the point because your thread has thickness and if you aim for that X you're going to be off. And the truth is you may be off a little bit anyway but I think it will look good. I want to make sure this is flipped the right way it is. Sometimes my machine flips it for some reason and I don't like that. Alright, so now this one's ready. Just follow your quarter inch guide. It will work. Okay. I'm putting this on top rather than the square on top mostly because I don't want the uh, seams to flip. That's the reason. Okay. And here's the one that's off. Shocker. All right. I'll never know whether I hit my actual pin or not. Okay, so now, cut our little, they're getting longer or bigger, these pieces. Okay, now this one, they're showing you on the picture that you are pressing towards the square. So if I put this back together like this, okay, here it is, here it is, these are our pieces. They're telling you that you press this one this way, okay, if that one goes this way, this one has to go towards the corner. So you press towards the corners and towards the center, okay. I'll take it to my iron and do that right now. Here we go, let's put it back in the pieces in, in where they belong. So. This is where they go, and you can see they pretty. This one came pretty close to hitting right there. This one's right on the money, so I'm just gonna. I think it looks good. We have a sharp point there. I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, I'm just gonna keep on going. All right, and so now we're gonna do the same thing with lining up the points. All right, so this time this is on top because the way it gets flipped. So I'm going to stick the pin right in the point and that, well let's get it right in the seam. Okay, that looks better. All right, and you can see that it fits pretty well so I can actually just pull that out and put that in, which means it's going to be close enough. Days. Okay, I'm just going to pin and stitch. You don't have to worry about aiming. See, it's just that it's not on the top this time. So, Alright, this time it's on the top. Just the way it worked. This one, truly we can just center. Put a pin in the middle to keep it steady. One pin. Okay, now we have to pin this one. Okay, I pinned it right through that center so I know that's where it's lined up. And leave the pin in and you know you haven't j jiggled it if you put one to one side. I think I've shown some of you this before and one on the other side. I just pinned myself. That was talented. Alright, I put more pins in last time. We'll see. This might be the wrong move. I'm sort of struggling to get over that. That's not good. See how it goes. I'm going really close to the pin, so in case there was any of that extra bulk from when it started to get struggle to get going. All right, this gets these same get pressed the same as last time, towards the center square, towards the corners. I'll be right back. Two more seams and the block is done. All right, look at that. Look at that block. 
just these two seams to sew together. Points, we have points in our stars. It's a little bulky here, so if you want to change your mind and press open, you can. I'm not going to worry about it because when it's all quilted down, I think it will look great. So I'm going to put this down here, and I'm going to nest these two edges. Bring my pin cushion over. And slide this. And then I'm going to put this one right here. Make sure it's matched up here. Okay. Put a little pin here because this is the one that could slide. This is going to push into this. I think we'll put one here too, just to be on the safe side. Now we have the same motion with sticking this through the hole, right, sticking this right in the point. You can see sometimes you think you're getting it from the back and you're really not. Oh, that's too far up. Eh, pretty close. Alright, that's better. Now we'll go in the seam here. Okay, and we have a little, there we go. I think that's going to be alright. Put the pin right there. And now I'm going to put a pin right here. A little extra one here. Now we're going to repeat this on this side. That's good. That was better. I stabbed better this time. Probably fit better too. There we go. Put this pin here. Put this pin right here. And last but not least, one last pin. There we go. Alright. Now we're going to put this right on here. cushion where I can reach it with my right hand. I took that one pin out a little early, so we'll see how it... Um, does on the, on the edge. Put the ball in there too close. There we go. There we go. Pin up. Okay, one more seam and our block is done. I'm going to take this to the iron. Hope for the best. It says to press it to this corner piece, but I may press it open because there's a lot of bulk. And this is off. I can see that that's off just a little bit. So we may decide to move it. Let's just see what happens. Sometimes you can fix that with pressing. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it for right now. Now I'm going to flip this over onto the top and repeat the pinning. Start with the center block, pin here, pin a little bit before, this one goes here, and a little bit before, and we'll put one in the center. Now, this is where we want it to line up. So we're going down a quarter of an inch into the seam. We want to go right into that seam and then right into that point. It's actually easier to do it from the side when you can stab right into the point. Okay, I'll put the pin there. And one here. We'll do the same thing here. Stab right into the seam, right into the point. 
line it up. Now we're going to do going to do that right there. Okay. Now we're going to pin it. I mean, if we, we pinned it. it. Now we're going to sew it. Just saying. Now, when I shut my machine off, I leave it in there, I just put the needle up, and then I put the presser foot up, and I just turn it off. Boom. We're ready. It's all set. Now I'm going to press this the same way I pressed the other one. It worked. Shocker. Their directions worked. All right, everyone. Here is my block. All done. Hope you had fun making it. I'll be talking to you on Tuesday, but you know that because it is Tuesday when you're watching this.